Let's talk about it all here on the Jordy Colada Show. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button. You know, one thing about Jaden that I've tried to talk to him about is tightening his chin strap. Because he doesn't tighten it. So every time he gets hit, it looks like his helmet's all messed up. And it's like, oh, God, he just got rocked. For the win! After a fucking Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, <laughs> boys. Are you kidding me? Well, uh, LSU fan came stuck his spike in my boot. <laughs> that ball my heart. Oh, 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 oh. Fan brought his two grandkids by and literally was just 30 seconds. Just wanted to say thank you for the team and the season and what you did and, and how much it means to everybody here is, is truly what makes LSU special. Yeah. Kelly. We're official. Finally. I'm Get telling a chance you. to meet you. Thought I have to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just there's Jordy. Money through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordy Collider show. And Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question, I thought, my God, if she gets offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast. No matter where we get the phone lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordy Collider show. Yeah. Day. Nice okay. start. Here's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Coach, it's great to meet you. Thanks, Thank you Tuesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show live here from our Click Here Digital Studios on this Tuesday morning. We appreciate you starting your day here with us. Make sure and like, share, follow, subscribe. So we'll be here till after 8 o'clock this morning. Our phone line is going to be brought to you as always by Southern Regional Medical Center. Remember, real doctors, real solutions. Southern Regional, uh, Regional Medical Center, uh, Charlie Harvey, Jason Ramazan, and the entire crew. Uh, speaking of Southern Regional Medical Center, I saw Charlie Harvey posted on Facebook that he has 300 tickets to tonight's basketball game as he is looking to uh, help sell out and pack the PMAC for LSU in North Texas as they will be squaring off inside of the first round of the NIT that LSU will host today on campus, uh, which will be awesome. Uh, so we will talk to Glenn West on our Southern Regional Medical for, uh, phone line coming up. That'll be at 7.30 this morning. Then at 8.15, we'll talk to Wilson Alexander as LSU's back on the practice field. Uh, was back on the practice field yesterday uh, in football. And we'll be back on the practice field uh, tomorrow morning at uh, at 7.55. Uh, so we will talk to Wilson about some of those Thursdays. Thursdays? Thursday? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. So they're practicing today. Well, but no access for media. Okay. And then Thursday is the next okay. ac media access day. Got it. Um, I thought it was Monday and Wednesday. Um, so there is practice today. We will talk to Wilson coming up this morning at uh, 8.15 this morning. Uh, all a part of our Southern Regional Medical phone line. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe as daily we're brought to you by RMB Builders, Brett Bourgeois and the crew, rmb-builders.com, rmb-builders.com. And on uh, social media, you can find them at uh, Instagram at RMB Builders. Uh, nice one for um, Beth Tarina and the crew yesterday as they close out the finale in Ole Miss, taking two of three from the Rebs as uh, LSU beats Ole Miss 9-2 to two in the softball series finale yesterday at Tiger Park. So, uh, nice start to the SEC season for Beth Torina and the ladies. As uh, we uh, we mentioned, uh, they had and did suffer their first loss of the weekend, which um, 
I, that's kind of good, I think. Uh, ended up losing uh, and uh, now 24 and uh, two on the season. Uh, oh, did, did they did they lost the first one? Oh, they lost nine and two. I'm reading this wrong. Oh. I'm reading this wrong. I'm reading Damn. this wrong. I'm sorry. I'm looking s- square at it. <laughs> and you're right. I'm, you're looking, great job. I'm looking directly at this. Reading, oh. <laughs> reading it completely wrong. Mm. Uh, my fault. My fault. Psych. Just kidding. Uh, LSU loses their <laughs> second of the season <laughs> uh, as they uh, they fall to uh, big softball. To Ole Miss. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just kind of still have our training wheels on here. Uh, on the softball content, my bad. Um, but LSU falls yesterday to Ole Miss Dynasty. Uh, on to better news tonight. LSU will be hosting uh, North Texas, a part of the NIT. We're going, man. I love it. Six o'clock start. Six o'clock start can lure me in. Uh, be out of the PMAC by about eight ish. Eight eight thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends. Eight depends 15. on how the game. Depends goes. on how it flows. Um, Keep the whistle in your pocket. That's right. But I mean, postseason play on campus, yeah. men's basketball. I'm in. I mean, coach. I'm in. I'm in. You got you got you got a selection of postseason opportunities this week on campus for LSU men's tonight versus North Texas, uh, and then of course with the women starting the uh, the opening round of the NCAA's this week as they will host Rice. Uh, Louisville's in this bracket as well in this part of the region, uh, and they will have postseason action over the weekend as well. So, uh, great opportunities here yeah. in South. Good weekend for right sports. Around. Yeah, it's a great weekend for sports. LSU, Florida, and then you got women's basketball, and you got men's basketball tonight. So yes, uh, some opportunities to get out there. And you do have LSU men's baseball. Obviously, LSU baseball this weekend uh, with Florida coming in town. Uh, Jay Johnson was speaking with the media yesterday for the first time, and we'll talk to Glenn West about this coming up here uh, on our Southern Regional Medical phone lines. But good stuff from Coach Johnson yesterday, as he did announce tonight uh, versus Louisiana Tech uh, that he is going to start Javen Coleman uh, in tonight's action. So uh, if you're heading out to the box tonight, Coach Johnson did make his pitching uh, lineup and make his pitching he confirmed he confirmed it last night uh, that Coleman is going to get the start here uh, in the midweek game with Florida coming up this weekend. So looking forward to talking to Big Glenn West uh, about that and what the latest is there uh, with LSU. But it seems like uh, kind of a lot what we were talking about yesterday. Uh, Jay Johnson is 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 kind of spelling out uh, as well. No 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 sense of panic. Uh, no no time to panic here if you're LSU baseball. I mean, from a competitive standpoint, Mississippi State's always uh, going to give you uh, and bring, uh, you know, a tough matchup when when they play LSU. Uh, and I know LSU's had some success um, versus Mississippi State, uh, but it's always tough games that feel like they can go either either way. And and this weekend, LSU was just on the wrong side of it. I do not think that it's calls for panic. I don't think that it's calls for. Uh, you know, sounding the alarms, but you know, for from a SEC standpoint, I think it's just a, another example of every single weekend. You know, no matter the the number in front of the the name, you know, you could have a a, a top five, top ten opponent like you're going to be facing over the next couple of weekends with Florida, Arkansas, Tennessee, all coming up, or it could be somebody like Mississippi State who doesn't have a number in front of them or didn't last week when you played them and takes two of three from you convincingly. So, you know, I mean, I, I think that's just the message of, of the weekend. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the more examples of the SEC and just how deep and how competitive and how tough it is, right? I mean, every single weekend, it doesn't matter who you're playing – where you are, on the road or at home, um, and you're in for it. I mean, you're going to be in for one. And LSU got that message, got that lesson, hopefully, sent to them uh, on opening weekend. Yeah, because Mississippi State came to fight. I mean, they were – they like That was no fluke. No. no. I mean, they, they took it to LSU, and LSU just couldn't – it's like LSU threw punches early, and 
all three games it seemed like, and then Mississippi State just punched back, and LSU just didn't have a counter punch. Didn't have for an it. answer. Like, I mean, it was they got beat. Yeah, I mean, like, was, I got straight up. Yeah, and man, he, Jay said know, it like, yeah. I, we got beat straight yeah. up. I can't say we weren't prepared to win. Like he, they asked him if it was a wake up call. He said, no, that's not right. They weren't going in there not ready to win and not prepared to win. We got beat by a team that played really good two out of three. And one message from one right now, when it's going well, it's never as good as it seems. And when it's bad, it's never as bad as it seems. So, Jay Johnson has not lost faith in his team. No way. You, you can't. It's one I mean, weekend. That's, that, that's, why, that's why I'm really calm. I mean, like, yeah. there's no, there's no mean, real high alert here other than you, you know, you, you, you took one on the chin. The opening weekend of SEC play. Eh. You know, I mean, to be expected if 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 you show up and may not respect the the competition. I don't. Say, I'm not saying that they didn't. Uh, I'm just saying that you know, it, it, when you show up number two in the country and you're pulling into a place that uh, is not ranked and has has struggled a little bit, you know, psychologically, we're, we're programmed to maybe believe that it may. It may be an easy weekend, or it may be a weekend that you should take care of business. When in fact, you know, like Mike Tyson said so famously in the '80s, <laughs> everybody's got a plan to get punched in the mouth, right? I mean, like, you know, I mean, the plan is to to show up and win until Mississippi State starts knocking a cover off the ball, <laughs> Jeez. right? For all these pitchers that you pull in town, feeling so confident in, right? I thought that that Jay Johnson had a lot of uh, you know, positive things to say about, um, you know, his starting pitching over the weekend, you know, talking um, about about Luke Holman. And you know, his exact quote was, I talked to Luke on Saturday, and he's such a professional about how he goes about his business. He said he'll be better this week. He gives us a chance to win without his best stuff. And we got caught in the middle part of the game where it's tough to take him out. I probably would have gotten him out a batter or two earlier, but the guy had just thrown 24 scoreless innings for my book. That's who I want on the mound. He's earned that right. Then he talked about Gage jump on Saturday. Gage is highly competitive as well. I didn't talk to him yesterday, but I'll talk to him today, meaning that he talked to him on Monday or tomorrow, meaning today. He's definitely talented, and I'm sure he's eager to get back out there and compete this weekend. So, Jay Johnson talking about just a personal relationship and conversations he's having with his pitchers coming off of a weekend where there was high expectation because of their performance leading into SEC play. And then after having a chance to see what the numbers did and what the lineup did for Mississippi State, obviously you had some things that you want to take away and try and improve on before Florida pulls into town on, on Friday. Um, so we'll talk more about it with Glenn West coming up here in a couple of minutes. West, of course, uh, covers LSU for two, four, seven. So we'll cover it all with him. Uh, LSU basketball, both men's and women's men's tonight cranks up versus North Texas in postseason play Matt McMahon and, and the Tigers hosting an NIT game, uh, on campus. These are usually fun. Some of, uh, some, some of the, the, the memories that I have, I don't know about you out there, but if you have any basketball memories, some of my uh, cool postseason memories of LSU basketball uh, are around NIT performances. Early in, in, in the 2000s, John Brady and LSU hosted a, uh, a, a uh, NIT game on campus. I want to say it was versus Ball State. And they ended up losing that game, but the atmosphere was incredible. That night, it was Antonio Hudson um, and that team. I want to say it was like 2002 uh, was that one. It was a great atmosphere uh, that LSU ended up not being able to prevail. And then we always, you know, will recall the Lafayette, oh. the Cajuns, Bob Marlin. <laughs> I, I was at that one. Oh, uh, that was a classic. Yeah. Will Wade, was it, was it 2002 Ball State? What was it? Did it go to OT? Damn, it was a ten point win. Seventy five sixty five. Did it go to did it go to overtime? Did it say it go to overtime? No, because it, it I mean it would probably say it if it did. Um 
But it was, I, I just remember it being a great atmosphere. Um, that was, I believe, like Jaime Ureta was on that team. Antonio Hudson was on that team. Um, was Collis Temple maybe on that team? That was a, a CT3. That was that, that was a great atmosphere uh, that night, but it was uh, LSU did not be LSU was not able to to win that game. Um, they did win the, the the Lafayette game a couple of years mm-hmm. ago with Will Wade, and it was it was a pretty good game. The game yeah. was back and forth, but you know what will always be remembered is the post game press conference, the arena. I mean <laughs> of. That was kind of like Wade's indoctrination of like, whoa, this guy, we love him. Yeah, you know, like, that, that that was like, like, damn, we're riding with this guy. Yeah, because like, cause like that was like I was a student, so yeah. I was like, that's when I was like started to really like LSU basketball. Like because at first when I first got to LSU, the basketball team was Johnny Jones teams. Sure. They were denying an IT invitations. Like oh, it was just bad. Gosh. Like it was all bad. And then Will Wade gets here. You go to the NIT. You beat UL, an uh, in-state rival, and he goes in the post game and like attacks the other coach, and it's just like, oh, it was unbelievable. I love this guy. Well, I mean, if you remember, Wade won the pre- – Wade still to this day has – I've been covering LSU sports since 2010 consistently, and there's been a lot of coaches that have come and gone during that time. Wade to this day single-handedly has the best introductory pes- press conference I've ever covered on campus. I mean, like, it was in the union. They invited the students. They gave them free lunch. Joe Oliva introduced Wade, and Wade, nobody knew, had this energy to him that, like, it was so meant to be that that press conference was there. I mean, now knowing Will Wade, and we all know his personality, I mean, that was, it was epic. I mean, it was... There were people looking over the balcony. There were people staring out. There were people. It was interactive. He was cheering. I mean, it was awesome. It was one of the great introductory press conferences that that I've ever seen. I mean, forget covering it on LSU's campus. I'm talking about just in general. Um, and you know that that was that was kind of the first where you're like, man, this guy might be. He might have some energy to him, and then that game that night after, you know, that was his first season where he took the team to the NIT. And obviously, you know, I mean, the post game has the the epic. I mean, that press conference was – I mean, I, we were all in. I mean, Jacques was like – you know, Jacques was like, this is going to be incredible. I mean, he, <laughs> people were just looking around like, this is unbelievable. Like, this is – even like Kent Lowe's, like, oh, uh, <laughs> okay, coach. <laughs> I mean, like it was. He was like hitting the desk. I mean, it was like, whoa. It was it, it was incredible, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think Wade and I actually kind of struck up the friend. Uh, you know, we became more friends because of actually. I'm wearing the hat. Phil's Oyster Bar. Anthony and I grew up together. Anthony and I have been, you know, close and friends since we were kids. And it all really kind of centered around because our people, you know, his dad, Gus Piazza, my grandfather, were very involved in LSU sports. They were both tight with Skip. They were both tight with Dale Brown. They were both tight with, you know, like Bob Broadhead at the time. And, um, you know, people that were trying to get the, the ball rolling on the support of, of LSU sports where, you know, to make it competitive off the field. And, you know, we would see, we would all be at events around LSU, whether it was at games, whether it was, you know, traveling to, to games, whether it was at coaches committee meetings for baseball or whether it was just, you know, kind of at, at Phil's Oyster Bar eating. Um, you know, I mean, that, that Wade was looking – to try and find, you know, I mean, it's what we talk about with outsiders. And when I say outsiders, just people who don't, don't, do not, do not understand uh, the culture of LSU. I mean, I I think I've traveled around, around enough to uh, athletic buildings and, and universities and programs and, and seeing that success levels, whether they're high or low, 
the LSU job is different than just about all of them. I mean, I've been to Florida Florida's facility. I've been to Bama's facility. I've been to Tennessee's facility. I've seen, you know, Georgia's up close. All of those competitively feel just about the same. LSU is in that discussion. The job is just a little different in the way that you have to to navigate it, right? Politically, to be honest. And Wade was either, as he will tell you, smart or lucky that he just ended up in the the right room of the people that, you know, kind of gave him the navigation, the the flashlight of, look, here's the things that you need to look out for. Here's the people you need to align yourself with. Here's the people you need to stay away from. Like, this is kind of a, a roadmap of giving you the history of Louisiana politics and LSU and how it all kind of commingles. It, it, you know, here's a crash course on understanding that. And, you know, I, I told you, I believe the famous quote that Wade told me, you know, right after he got fired. And he's right. You know, LSU is the only place that would have kept me when they didn't fire me. And they're the only school that would have fired me when they they let me go. It's just because the politics ultimately saved him and then washed him away at LSU. And if you don't understand, I think there was even a period for Brian Kelly that, you know, I mean, no matter the position, no matter the role, whether you're the highest paid and the most important position on paper you still have a you still have to have some some time to understand what a, what am I dealing with well you're dealing with like if you don't get this right the governor may call down and tell you what you have to do has that happened oh yeah it happened like within the last decade I mean they saved a coach and fired a coach because of it. And if you just don't understand that, it's got to be very intimidating. I mean, hearing Wade describe coming into LSU as, you know, kind of an outsider, not knowing anybody, not knowing anything. And then like having a year, two years, three years on the job and getting to know those people and know the, the inner workings and know how it, it functions, I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it, it could be a scary place for somebody that just doesn't know. Like Jay Johnson, very smart. First call, skip. What do I need? Who do I need? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need not to talk to? Ooh, sit down, son. Hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> you know, and like, I mean... I got five. We all agree. Skip knows where the bodies are buried, right? I mean, he knows he knows how to tiptoe through the graveyard. He stepped on the landmines and he's been able to to veer away from some. He's also planted some. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I mean he 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 knows the lay of the land. Right? I mean, somebody that's been able to to help Jay Johnson kind of like, no, don't go over there. Come this way, you know, or talk to them. Just would be a. How did we get here? <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait. But I mean, we'll, we'll wait talking was, about the NIT, just talking the about NIT, the LSU being the NIT. The NIT. He won the press conference, and then once he, really, what saved Wade more than anything was the fact that the the public was on. Yeah, I mean. The student body love the, like, the, 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 the 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 ticket fan the, yeah, the the the, the ticket don't, buyers yeah. the season you know the the, the ticket buyers loved him. So it was like it was very hard. Like I, as a student, we were very upset when Will Wade got fired. Sure, like sure. Honestly, we should have rioted, but you know. they almost did. <laughs> I kind of hope he gets the Louisville job. I know this is very petty, but like Pat Forty lives in Louisville. Mm. Uh, they could be best I mean, friends. like to have him as like the local coach would be just a 
You have to write about Will yeah, Wade I mean, every like, day. If you got nothing to do, Pat, you can always go cover the basketball team and go to his press conference. <laughs> He'd probably ask him to ask some questions. Pat, you got a question? But, I mean, Travis McGraw, Wade's first luncheon at LaBerge, I remember this, when he got hired was also low-key epic. It was small group of boosters. He had laid out a plan. Uh, McGraw's talking about that he went with Tasman. Uh, me and Taz were like, we're back. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, I, I remember that. I, I remember that press line. I don't know if they still do these, but those were fantastic. Uh, Kent Lowe put these together at LaBerge and they would do it, um, maybe once a month. And Wade would come in and I believe they started it with Johnny Jones um Wade would, would would come in there but Wade came in on the first one and Jones Jones is a Johnny Jones I, and Johnny Jones I know to this day doesn't really care for me anymore because of the comments that I made about him and his team um in in the season of Ben Simmons and turning down the NIT I mean I was very uh young and inexperienced on the radio at the time and 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 did not understand the you know, probably the cooth and the 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 cooth and the respect that you know the microphone holds and and you know never allows people to forget what comes out of it, um, which you know I, I have tried to 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 uh, to apologize to Jones and and uh, to his own uh, decision and to 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 which he is his prerogative. It's just it's very different because when he got here, uh, Jones was was somebody who was. Uh, somebody I had known uh, and still do to this day as, you know, since he was a kid. I mean, when since I was since, since I was a kid, I'm sorry, um, just being around LSU basketball when he was a, a young assistant uh, and then, you know, for a, spending a lot of time of growing up and going to basketball camps and being around Phil's Oyster Bar where, where he was always, you know, in the back room when he got the job, that was a real celebration for a lot of local people that, you know, it was kind of like, it was kind of like Ed Ogeron getting the football job. I mean, there were a lot of local people that were like, yeah, that's, a, that's our guy. That's one of our, our friends, one of our boys. One of, you know, the, the, the term that came to, to, to kind of live on from it was like, one of us. Uh, and Johnny Jones was, was kind of that. He had the support, the, the, you know, like kind of the momentum behind him. And when, when that team made that decision to, ultimately turned down the NIT bid with Ben Simmons. Uh, you know, it was just, it, it was not good. And, you know, probably said some things that you just don't say publicly, uh, knowing, you know, how the microphone works now. And no excuse, I said it, screwed up, and, you know, cost myself, a, a you know, a relationship, a friendship out of it. But, you know, one thing that that luncheon had kind of turned into under Jones was that Jones was such a likable person. And when he would get into those atmospheres, you would see why. I mean, he, he, he'd he work the room. He could tell jokes. He'd have everybody laughing. Everybody was kind of, you know, I mean, it, you'd, you'd shake his hand and hug him on the way out. Will Wade stepped in there on the first luncheon. And I mean, he was waving his fist and pointing in the air and saying what we're going to do and here's the plan and here's how we're going to win and these are the people that we're going to win with and you could see like people in there were like whoa this is way different like this is holy cow this is this is like this is must have been what it felt like to be a in the room with a young dale brown i remember somebody saying and I kind of was like, yeah, I wasn't around young Dale Brown, but he's got this energy to him where you're like, where are we going? I'm coming. You know what I mean? Like, wherever you're taking us, wherever you're selling, I'm buying. I mean, it was like, geez, this guy is, we're off. Um, And and that was, you know, that was kind of how he built it. Um, All right, so we're going to talk to, Glenn West, Big G, next here. Uh, remember our friends, I've been telling you about our friends over at uh, Landscape 180, uh, Landscape 180. Uh, Caleb Heine and the crew over at uh, Landscape 180 remind you that it is time right now for to think and start to update your landscaping. 
Uh, and if you're thinking about that, Landscape 180 offers free consultations and can put a plan together for any budget. They offer irrigation install, drainage solutions, outdoor lighting, and so much more. Uh, so right now is a great time to get landscaping cleaned up. Uh, if you've uh, like got cold weather back here again today, uh, but if you've experienced any uh, drawbacks from the freeze or you need to update the plants, the landscape, get in touch with our friend Caleb Heine over at Landscape 180. He's online at landscape180.com or he urges you just to pick up the phone and call him directly. Here's his cell number, 225-421-6933, 421-6933. You see it on the screen there. Get in touch with Landscape 180. Update your landscaping today, right now for the spring. I believe today's the first day of spring mm -hmm. uh, with chilly temps down here. Uh, all right, so we ha do we have Glenn? Uh, if we have Glenn, we will. We do uh, we? Will, we, do we? All good. right, sweet. Uh, no break. We will uh, patch right into the big fella here. Lots to get to. As, uh, as we said, basketball active now. Men's tonight on campus. Ladies tomorrow on campus, both of those postseason action. Baseball home tonight versus Louisiana Tech before the Gators pull into town this weekend. LSU football on the spring practice field. It's a great time for the sports calendar, so let's catch up with the big fella. Glenn, good morning. How are you? Hey, Jordy. Thanks for having me. How are you? Always, buddy. Good to see you. Um, all right, let's start baseball. Jay Johnson was talking yesterday. Um, and you could sense it in his voice, and by all means, I don't think that it's time, but no, no seams of panic over there at the box yesterday. Uh, what did you take away of opening weekend of SEC play? Yeah, I mean, certainly a lot of things you're going to have to talk about and get right. Um, you know, I, I think Jay was, was pretty poignant in his opinion yesterday that there's really no reason to worry about this pitching staff, and I, I, I don't think there's any reason to worry about them either. I mean, they were... Uh, so dominant for the first month of the season. And uh, sometimes, you know, a team like Mississippi State that's got a lot on the line, you know, they had kind of struggled through non-conference play um, and, and they needed kind of a big series like this uh, at home uh, to kind of get their season back on track. And sometimes you just, you, you got it going at the plate and you're, you're hitting beach balls. And I think that was uh, a, a good case there for, for those three games. Uh, LSU did not uh, execute a lot of its, you know, just just didn't execute throughout the entire entirety of the series with their pitch execution and um, you know there there's there's some, certainly some things you know Mississippi State was really hunting the fastball and they were uh, you know, really jumping on LSU early in counts and it's just kind of hard to catch up after that and and you know they they did a really nice job of kind of applying some early pressure on LSU in these games and uh, you know, and that situation where we we kind of expected coming in that, that you know this pitching staff would have to carry LSU through a lot of the season uh you, you have to hope that your offense can kind of get it together as well and uh you know I thought the offense had had some good moments but uh for for the most part really um you know it was a lot of the same they just they kind of weren't able to get guys in that were on base and uh they had a lot of opportunities to but they just they just weren't able to come up with as many clutch hits as they probably could uh or would have liked um so you know there's there's certainly a lot you could take away from from this weekend i think uh you know the the, the one positive or maybe a the biggest positive you can take away is, is tommy white getting going at the plate you know three home runs seven rbis I think he batted over 400 on the weekend. So that's a real positive for LSU as they head into the meat of their SEC schedule here. Um, but you'd like to see, uh, you know, not only some uh, some other guys at the plate kind of, you know, help carry him th carry the Tigers through, but also uh, get back on track on the mound this weekend as well. Uh, what are we looking for tonight? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, you, you just kind of want a clean game. Uh, look, Louisiana Tech you know, is, is probably – you know, one of the top, if not the top in-state school in baseball outside of LSU. So they, they've been pretty consistent down there uh, under Burroughs. And uh, so I, I do think that, you know, this is going to be a, a challenging midweek game. This, they usually are against Louisiana Tech. Um, so, you know, they're, you're, they're going to start with Javen Coleman on the mound. I think you're going to see a healthy dose of guys like Cam Johnson, Kate Anderson. Uh, you know, would imagine, you know, several of these young guys get a chance to uh, – to, uh, to, sh to show some stuff on the mound and because I, I do think the one thing that this weekend did open up is is opportunity for a lot of these young pitchers that maybe haven't gotten it to this point in the season so they can string together some consistent outings on the mound uh it might open up the door for them to, to see some appearances uh, out, out of the bullpen this weekend as well so you know you're gonna start with javen coleman on the mound 
Um, you know, in the in the field, you like to have a clean game uh, on defense after kind of a you know, six error weekend there. Uh, you'd like to see them play pretty clean defensively and. Uh, really, I would love to just see this offense move the baseball and move guys on base, and um, you know, the, you know, maybe not rely so much more, so much on the home run ball, and really show that they can be that contact team that, that can really uh, put pressure on teams by just by getting a lot of guys on base and, and bringing them in. Uh, the pitching, did we make too much of it going in, or, or where where are you coming out of uh, of last weekend? Are they still? As high end as we thought, or or do they they need some some shining before more SEC competition? Uh, I, I think they're still in a pretty good spot pitching wise. I mean, I, I don't see you know, for example, Jay Johnson making any you know decisions in terms of replacing starters for the weekend. You know, I, I do think he's pretty set on Luke Holman, Gage Jump, and Thatcher Hurd. Um, and I think those are the three guys that you know you need. El- you, you know, I'm going to steal one of Jay's quotes: "Is they need all three of those guys to get to where they want to go." And that was a common theme that he used last year with uh, a couple of players. And I think that you know you, you're really going to have to rely on the starting pitching of this team, um, just because I think it might be a while before we see this offense maybe put it together consistently. I think you're going to you're going to have to really uh, rely on these these arms. I mean, they've got really good arms. I mean, they they Gage Jump throws 94, 95 from the left side, and they've been building him up. Uh, still a really young player in terms of just his experience level. Um, you know, Holman is a guy that has pitched in a lot of big situations last year in the SEC. Um, but you know, he, he's also you know he's he's there, he's a first. You know, this is this is going to be a, a real step up in terms of just you know being the guy that they rely on uh, to kind of get them through into the postseason and uh, as that ace, and then. Uh, of course, you know Thatcher has pitched in some really, really big games in, in the postseason and Omaha, and it's just been really up and down. I think this year, just in terms of his uh, you know, ball placement and, and, and command, has been a little bit of a question as well. Um, so, you know, the, look, they, 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 I don't think that they're hitting the panic button yet. If you just listen to what Jay was saying yesterday, I think that they uh, feel like they can still go on a pretty, you know, upwards trajectory with this pitching staff, and that they have a lot of depth. I mean, he talked about using 17 or 18 arms already this season and getting uh, a lot of these guys some some opportunities that um, you know that, that they wanted to see uh, but you know I, I do think that they they have some stuff that they got to figure out and you know to to be in that spot where you've got you know Florida and Vandy and Arkansas and Tennessee is kind of your next up uh, we're gonna learn a lot about this team here over the next four weeks that is true man it is going to be it, it, as we said it has a uh a week filled with postseason basketball on campus. The next couple of weekends uh, will feel like postseason baseball for Jay Johnson and yeah. LSU with two or three of those coming right here in Baton Rouge with Florida and Arkansas. They'll travel to Knoxville to play Tennessee. All right, G, let's go to hoops tonight. Uh, North Texas is in town. Uh, no matter what happens tonight, I, I have sold this season for Matt McMahon as a huge success. For them to be hosting an NIT game tonight, uh, I, I think is a great trajectory for, for year two, what do you make of what they've accomplished and, and what's on the line tonight? Yeah, I mean, we spoke with Matt yesterday and he kind of echoed those sentiments that, you know, look, even back in February, this team was in a bad place. You know, they were four and seven. They were, uh, and he, he even told us yesterday that they didn't really have postseason ball on their minds. They just wanted to kind of come day to day and get better. Um, and, and he gave great credit to his players um, for, for kind of just sticking with it. They, you know, come off three straight one point losses or something like that. They really kind of fought, uh, you know, it was kind of the start of their fighting back kind of uh, mantra that they kind of developed as the SEC schedule went on. And, um, you know, then you get the big wins over, you know, South Carolina, Kentucky, Georgia, all by one point. And you start to have a little bit more belief that this team uh, could, could get to where they ultimately uh, got to and then and, you know, that's nine and nine in SEC play. I mean that's a seven win improvement from last year. I think it was the second biggest jump in the SEC and uh, you know we, we know the SEC they just sent what seven eight teams to the SEC tournament and or to the NCAA tournament and you know that's that's uh, and LSU I think was just kind of the, the one team there that was on the outside you know looking in in terms of tournament uh, just kind of a notch below a lot of those other uh, really really stellar programs so. Um, you know, there's there's a lot to build on here. They've got uh, you know, obviously the transfer portal open yesterday, so they're going to have to be kind of double dipping in terms of uh, looking at next year's roster and how that could fill out, but also 
um, you know, you know, take, to, you know, making sure that they can win as many games in, in this tournament as they as they can, because I I do think they believe that the, a deep run in this tournament uh, can continue to build some really great off season momentum for these guys, and uh, really I think help sell some of these younger core players that you're hoping to get back next year of why they should come back and why they should make another run uh, to try to get into the NCAA tournament and really complete this turnaround uh, and get LSU on a more consistent winning uh, consistency. Much like last year, I mean, the keys to the internal squad is going to be this sophomore class, right? I mean, Tyrell Ward, Jalen yeah. Reed, and crew, get them back, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Ward, Reed, uh, I would throw in Mike Williams yeah. and Corey Chess, the, the freshmen from this year. And uh, certainly you've got Damian Collins, who – going to take a medical red shirt i think he can be a a good piece for you next year in terms of rim protection and rebounds if he can stay healthy and then you've got really two really talented freshmen coming in as well curtis gibbons is a is a guard out of florida and uh robert miller is you know the number two player in texas so uh you know they, they've got some, some some talent coming in and uh, i think really the next couple weeks is going to be about finding some difference makers out of the transfer portal I think you're going to see a very, very aggressive LSU in terms of the, the, the kind of the top-notch players that go in there. I think they understand they need some star power in the program, and uh, I think they're going to be very aggressive in trying to pull that off. Uh, gee, would you make of LSU women getting the three seed? Yeah, I mean, talk about a gauntlet of a, a, a regional that they're in. I mean, Iowa, UCLA, and and you know they got to get through their own you know first weekend here with with Rice, and then probably you know uh, maybe a potential rematch with Haley Van Lissel team. I mean, they've they've got a gauntlet here because I mean, if they kind of run through this first weekend, get into that Elite Eight kind of picture, you're looking at having to maybe go through you know, Iowa and South Carolina before getting to the national championship. So. Uh, but you know they, they put this team together for to, to, to kind of make this kind of run. They've got they've got stars all across the board uh, with their starting lineup, and you know I think the one concern I maybe have for this team is they only go about six or seven deep. You know they're, you're going to be asking these guys these girls to play you know entire games or most of the entire games in high high intensity situations. Uh, can that hold up for the next three weeks is going to be uh, something that I, that I really look at. Um, but, you know, they, they've got a lot of talent here. They've got, you know, it was it was a little bit of a surprising draw in terms of just how competitive I think that specific region of the bracket is. But um, I think it was probably by design. They, they wanted to see some competition in this tournament, and they're certainly going to get it here over the next couple weeks. Um it looks like they were just trying to guarantee themselves the the, the Caitlin Clark Angel Reese matchup. I mean, I thought for sure they tried to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, teams... I mean uh, yeah, you could have made the argument they could have been a two seed. Um, you know, I, I also like what LSU put yesterday that you know, after they found or a couple days ago after they found out they were going to be a three seed. Is, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? So I mean, mm -hmm. they they you know, ran the tables yesterday or last year as a as a three seed, and um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's no question they've they've got a. A pretty uh, pretty hefty task ahead of them in terms of getting back to where they were last year uh, in this tournament. Just just based uh, purely on all the teams are going to have to go through to get there. Uh, Brian Kelly and the football team back on the Ponderosa on the practice field today uh, from spring break. Uh, I know that you haven't seen a lot of action, very limited in what the media has been able to view up to this point. Uh, but what what are some of the storylines that, that that you were watching as LSU goes through these fifteen workouts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get back to, to it tomorrow. We're going to get 20 minutes of individual drills, and we'll have a full practice later this weekend, which is going to be really good, I think, for the media to kind of get their hands or get their eyes on this team for you know a full you know, two-hour practice, however long it goes. But, uh, you know, just a couple things that I've been um, you know, just kind of picking up on and just wanting to watch is, uh, you know, I think, you know, really the, the, the defensive line and particularly on the interior is going to be, uh, something that we're, we're going to be watching closely. I know that's probably no different than a lot of the guests you've had on here over the last couple of weeks and what you guys have talked about, but, uh, they, they really have got to figure out just how many guys that they feel like they can rely on come fall and, you know, let that dictate how aggressive they want to be in the second portal window when it opens, uh, after the spring. So certainly interior defensive line. Uh, I'm going to be interested, honestly, to see how they rotate these linebackers. I mean, um, you know, you've got, obviously, Harold Perkins now working on the inside with Greg Penn and Whit Weeks and Wes Weeks. I, I think that's probably, in terms of talent, 
maybe your deepest uh, room, just in terms of like numbers and trying to get all those guys to, to, to kind of fit together. I mean, uh, you know, we yeah, have a lot of you know, fans and media, you know, we're clamoring for, for a lot of wit weeks last year. And, you know, because of Greg Penn and, and Omar Spates, he was kind of, you know, that, that third that third linebacker that maybe didn't see it to see the field as consistently as many of would, would have wanted. So uh, how they kind of rotate those three guys in this year inside linebacker is going to be very interesting to watch uh, over spring practice. And uh, and then the, the other one, on, I'll flip it to the offensive side of the ball, the one that I'm really, really keen in on is, is Caleb Jackson. I think this has got to be – uh, really his big breakout offseason, and uh, LSU is going to have to rely on him in a big, big way this year. And I think he's poised to do some great things if he develops the right way. Uh, obviously, with him and uh, Josh Williams, those are the only two scholarship backs on the roster this spring. So there's going to be no shortage of opportunities for those two guys to kind of establish their roles here uh, in this offense. But uh, the development of the run game, and in particular Caleb Jackson's development, are are going to be really, really key to, to LSU having the success they want on offense. Uh, gee, can you put into perspective what Brad Davis is doing, has done to the offensive line here? I know that we have talked about this and beat this down, and and we have given our opinion on this show. But bring in somebody who's you know got the inside track and and has the relationships here. Um, Brad Davis. I mean, yeah. Can you can you explain what he's doing yeah he an elite developer and an elite recruiter um and and just kind of they go hand in hand there and uh look i think probably the biggest thing that helped lsu coming out was hitting on uh will campbell emory jones yeah. miles frazier uh garrett dellinger having that core foundation in place for the last three years has really helped allowed lsu to kind of build up the depth and develop the depth behind them. Um, you know, having those consistent stars to where they're not dipping into the portal and having to use portal spots to try to find, you know, plug holes on the on the starting offensive line. It's really allowed LSU to recruit the way they want to recruit all these positions, which is through freshman classes. And they have uh, probably the best recruiter and, and developer of talent in the country, in Brad Davis. I mean, I don't think there's any offensive line coach out there that's doing it as consistently as, as Davis is. I mean, I think you're going to see all four of these guys that have been starting for LSU the last couple of years. They could all potentially be drafted in you know mid rounds or higher next year in the draft, and uh, then you know you kind of hand it off to the next group in line, and they've recruited really really well um you know they got they brought in six for this 2024 class they've got three uh for the 2025 class including you know one of the top interior linemen and uh james uh james or no, uh, devin harper who's the top uh you know, offensive lineman in, in, L in louisiana so he's just been a, doing a bang-up job and i think the the one consistent that we do we we talk with all these players you know kind of during spring and fall uh and you know the one consistent is that we all hear is that he knows how to tap into each individual player's mindset and how to kind of get the best out of each individual player. And I think that, you know, from a teaching perspective, it's just really, really rare for a coach to be able to kind of unlock what, you know, kind of gets a player going and kind of gets his development uh, in an upward trajectory pretty, pretty quickly. Um, how good do you expect that unit to be this year? They're going to have to be really, really yeah. good. I mean, I, I, you, know, you don't have the, 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 the kind of the safety net of Jaden Daniels' legs and just kind of being able to, you know, when things go awry in the backfield, it's just kind of dark for 15, 20, 30, or 80 yards in some cases. I mean, he's he was, a, a you know, a, a, an offensive machine all by himself. And so I think you're going to have to really, you know, f hone in on the, on the pass protection there with Garrett Nussmeyer. I mean, Nuss can extend plays a little bit, but – even thus extending plays, he's still looking to pass. He's not looking to get out of the pocket or really uh, get downfield. He's going to be looking to pass downfield on, on those plays. So, you know, getting, you know, making sure he's well protected. I don't think he was sacked in that Wisconsin game, for example. So they did a nice job uh, in the bowl game. That's a good start there. Uh, but really, the run game, I think, is where you want to see the most development from them. Brian Kelly's talked about it. LSU's going to be more diverse with their running. They're going to try more outside zone, more perimeter runs, more power, um, you know, and, and to try to free up some of the, the running lanes for these backs. And I think they're going to try to use these athletic offensive linemen to, to try to pull and, 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 and open up some, some consistent running lanes. And, uh, you know, if they're, if they're able to do that and Caleb Jackson develops the way that they, they, they want, um, 
then I, I think you're looking at, a, at another really, really consistently good offense that can push the ball down the field and uh, have have some really, really great balance in, in, in scoring uh, a lot of points uh, come, come 2024. Uh, you at Alec Box tonight? You in the Maravich Center? How you split your time? I will be in the Maravich Center watching the uh, men's basketball team try to uh, get a postseason win and, and advance in the tournament. We're going to send our guy Bryce Kuhn over to baseball tonight, so uh, we'll we'll have everything covered for sure. But I will be at, in the PMAC. Two four seven has you covered. Big Glenn West does it good as uh, good as anyone. Make sure and follow him on social media at Glenn West twenty one. You can catch him here time to time, giving us his knowledge. But make sure and follow the crew over at two four seven for a busy week ahead that cranks up tonight on campus. Uh, G, good to see you. We'll see you at the Merritt Center tonight. All right. Thanks, Jordy. Appreciate it. All right, man. Glenn West, check it in. Good stuff. Conversation brought to you by Go Roof. Our friends over at Go Roof, remember they can get you into a brand new roof today. Uh, rain all this weekend. So if you had any troubles, if you got some leaks and you need somebody to jump up on the roof and give you some roof maintenance or uh, maybe even give you a consultation on uh, installing a brand new roof, uh, Go Roof has so much experience. They're so well trusted. Uh, they're easy to work with. They've been in business for over 15 years. They do it right. Get in touch with them. Their reputation speaks for themselves. A uh, ton of five-star reviews that you can find over at GoRoof.com. G-E-A-U-X. Roof.com. Phone number simple, 225-927-8300. Hopefully, you have plugged that phone number into your contacts list. So if there is weather that comes through South Louisiana that came through this past weekend, you've already got your roof stored into your contacts, into your uh, in, in, into your uh uh, and the ability to get in touch with them uh, right there on the spot. 225-927-8300 is the phone number. Dial that in. 225-927-8300. Store that. Get in touch with Go Roof next time you have any roofing problems. And look, you can call them as the storm's going on. It doesn't have to be within business hours. Call them at any time. You get a leak uh, at night. You get a leak during the weekend. Uh, you know, out of hours, it's all good. Call Go Roof. They'll be over there on the roof. Diagnose the problem. Work with the insurance company. Take the headaches out of it. Uh, the guys are awesome, man. 225-927-8300. G-E-A-U-X. Roof.com. Go Roof. Uh, Seville Jr. Glenn looks tall. Glenn's 6'7". 6'10". 6'10". I'm sorry. Yeah. It was a Caden Durham hundred meter, <laughs> yeah, slight. Uh, he's six foot ten. He is without question uh, lottery pick number one in the media pickup basketball game. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Need he's rebounds. a lot. Shaq, yeah, Shaq draft pick. Gotta have him. It's a fight for number two. <laughs> Doesn't matter who's on the board. Glenn West goes one, one, one at six foot ten in the media uh, with a little bit of game, surprisingly. Uh, I, a lot I, I of see, lot of media members. I can see Glenn have They uh, they hide in the corner when a, when a ball is rolled out. Yeah. If somebody they waiting for <laughs> for the press and like a basketball rolls up or a football rolls uh -huh. up. I mean, there's a lot of phones that come out of the pocket straight to the. Whoa! Don't call my name. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, act like I'm doing something. A lot of buddy Sanjis. <laughs> let me, <laughs> you know let me check I mean? the email like, real quick. Whoa! Heads up. Um, Glenn would not be. Good back to the basket player. I was about to say, he seems like a big fundamental guy. Very fundamental. Uh, Going to be I good mean, we'll, footwork. We'll have game until into his fifties. Uh, you know what I mean? I we'll be the game. guy at the gym with the the, the, the knee pads, <laughs> the L pads on, <laughs> just busting your ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> like got twenty five and twelve on you, throwing elbows. I mean, you got the cutoff shirt on. You got the big biceps. Just just stepping through, <laughs> sweeping over the head, jab step. Get you leaning one way, kiss it off the glass from 10 feet with no angle. You're like, how is he making it? How is he doing this every time? Every time. It's always that one dude at the gym that it just pulls up and you're like. Boards it, chins it. <laughs> outlet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, making passes like Joe running Kitch. rim to rim, <laughs> just catching on the run, <laughs> finger roll at the other end, just like time out, time out, big guy, time out, time out, <laughs> off time the out. court. <laughs> we need to shuffle up the teams a little bit. We got Glenn. We got Glenn. <laughs> I mean, I can't. I'm not playing against this swamp monster. Can't even get under hour. the hour. 
at the Spectrum Rec Center over here. <laughs> like, I mean, this guy's been killing us for weeks now. It's camping under the basket. Sick of it. Got no expression to him. No, nope, just no can't celebration. Even, can't even talk shit to him. <laughs> I mean, just he high fives you. Good pass. You're like, ah, oh, all right, all right, all right, man. Can't even hate him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, busted your teeth out with a bloody nose. <laughs> Don't even hate the guy. I mean, invite him for a beer afterwards. Uh, hour two, we'll be back. Come back with us, Jordy Colada Show, live here from Click Here Digital. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make nope. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. For a hole in your roof, for a hole in your roof. Hey, Greg, roof up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Roof's up. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, to the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, Around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, 
or give them a call at 225-383-0682, Fourier Agency. Get Gordon. And get it done. Yo, everybody know Gordon in a 225. And he done link with Big Foe. He got Buku ties for Rari sliding, flying in a new cool ride. And every time I ride by, I see a brand new sign. I'm with Gordon. I know that he gon' get it done. Whether it's a big truck crash or a hit and run. Recovery funds, he fighting to get a ton. Mike Epps, man, we all about the Benjamin. Handling injuries, man, are you kidding me? Gordon McKernan, a champion energy. Yeah, family man with a family plan. Get Gordon, he gon' fix it like a handy man. Get Gordon. And get it done. Focus on getting in deposits, evil in the way, now I'm just driving around it. They said I need the soul searching, I already found it. I unlocked my other side, now I'm sounding astounded. Drive by and let it ride like a whip in a Tesla. Pressure never fades me, cause I'm bigger than pressure. I'm on my grind, bullshit, can't fit on my schedule. I'ma do what's best for me, you can keep all your lectures. Spend the summer stacking bread, might be gone till November. Pulling up like Trey Young just to freeze up December. I got niggas on the block like traditional sinners. OGs love me, so I hang with you. Winners. I took a break for a minute, I had to go charge up. Had to focus on my business, I'm coming back smarter. Heat up DJ, sell them go like I'm dropping the Carter. Coming back like KD, it's time to go harder. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. They said it likes a marathon, man. Shout out to Nip. They start to think you fall enough and they start in the flip. All right, welcome back here, Jordy Galata Show, live here from our Click Here Digital Studios. Remember, Click Here Digital, putting you in digital marketing plans that absolutely work. Proven. Uh, over 30 years in business, 650 five star reviews, 656, I believe, to be exact. Five star reviews that you can find online. Uh, if you want to check us out online at clickheardigital.com. Uh, if you just want to email me directly to have a contact over here, you can, Jordy, at clickheardigital.com. Uh, when I leave here, I'm going to meet with a client, somebody, a, uh, a satisfied client, somebody who's new to the digital world, uh, needed just some website traffic, needed just push some people, some SEO. Uh, we helped them with that. Very happy going into a uh, you know month strategy meeting, kind of after the, the, the first month of analytics, uh, how we want to... Uh, you know, reprioritize or maybe stay with what's working. But um, look, it's not just within automotive. It's within all types of industries, construction, uh, dental, medical, uh, legal. Uh, if you want to learn more about what's going on with Click Here Digital, whether it is Google ads, social media ads, creating content, OTT television, uh, whatever it may be, uh, clickheredigital.com. Email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Uh, taking care of uh, customers and uh, making people happy within the digital marketing space for over 30 years. So uh, click here, digital.com. Um, all right. We were talking a little bit in the break and it's always an interesting topic, I think. And shout out to Randy Livingston, who just won another state championship at Newman. I know that this one comes with a little bit of controversy as it was done uh, under appeal. I believe that uh, Randy Livingston has appealed a, um, um, a ruling by the LHSAA that I'm not getting into because uh, I don't know it and you know, really and truly, I don't, I don't care. Um, I, I do know that Randy Livingston is uh, without question, the question was posed in the break, Christian uh, is here, who is the, uh, the young intern, uh, 18 years old, uh, so still has very, very limited knowledge on the history of uh, some of the greats, you know, guys like Randy Livingston and uh, somebody else's name came up there. It might have been the Dwayne Bow thing came up the other day. Uh, Tasman Mitchell's name came up the other day, uh, or just a minute ago. Um, but he asked, who's the best high school basketball player I've ever seen? Um, and while, without even taking a breath, like without even thinking about it, just kind of like rolled off my, my Randy Livingston. Randy Livingston, without question, is the best high school basketball player to come out of this state since the early 90s, at least, right? I mean, I don't know the history of it and, like, could speak. And I know that there's been a lot of 
Carl Malone, Robert Parrish. I mean, like there has been some crazy good talent that has come out that that has come out of of Louisiana. People that I'm not mentioning that I don't even know that exist. I just know when Randy Livingston popped up, and the first time I saw him play was at the Maravich Center in the state championship game. And it had to be 1991 or 1992. I think he won three of them. 91, 92, 93. He was the Gatorade and Parade Magazine Player of the Year his senior season. He was named the Naismith National Player of the Year his senior year. He played in the McDonald's All-America game. He was uh, in Magic Johnson's Round Ball Classic. Uh, he was named to the USA Today's All-America First Team, and his jersey was retired at Newman. Um, he, I think he averaged 28 a game at Newman. Six assists. Um, he was, without question, the best high school basketball player I've ever seen. I saw an old picture that came out um, of that era uh, of college basketball. In fact, I, I, I liked it on, man, it might have been Instagram. It is a fantastic picture. Got it. He went for 26 a game, 50, 53, 52% shooting. 26 a game, eight shot 53%. 3,400 points. Wow. 3,400 points. Um, he was the best, man. I'm telling you, he was the best. Here it is, Stewie. Stewie. Look up uh, on can you can you pull Instagram off of there? No, I can. But I don't. Allen Iverson highlights page has a picture that features Ray Allen, Jacques Jones, Jacques Vaughn, Allen Iverson, Kerry Kittles, Keith Van Horn, Eric Dampierre, Tim Duncan, and Ronnie Henderson, who came into uh, LSU at the time. With Livingston, Ronnie Henderson and Randy Livingston came in at a time that was like post Shaq and post Chris Jackson, and like for people that were in my era, like it was when Chris Jackson and Shaq left. I, it was a dark, dark day. Like I, Shaq specifically, like I, I, CJ was. I mean, when it was kind of like Chris Jackson at the end was almost overshadowed by the Shaq hype. Right, so like when Shaq's hype hit for LSU, I mean, I was like twelve. So I mean, you were like on a rocket ship, you know what I mean? Like you were like, oh my god, this is unbelievable. And then like when he decided to leave, it was like, it was a. I mean, I remember it was raining outside. Like it was like it was depressing. But Randy Livingston came along. Like Chris Jackson was leaving, and Randy Livingston was showing up, and it was almost like. They were this. They were the same type of player. I had never seen somebody like Chris Jackson, now Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, in my life. A lot of people were, you know, saying the same thing that were older than me. I remember, you know, my my uncles and dads, my dad and like his friends would be like, you know, I've never seen it. Like this is like, you know, they were they were too young for Pistol Pete, but they they had like kind of they they were kind of like where I was with Chris Jackson. They were kind of young kids with Pistol Pete, so they didn't really. Remember it that you know they were seeing Chris Jackson up close for the first time, and then here comes Randy Livingston. Like he had a little bit more bounce to him than Chris Jackson. Like, but he could do all the you know shake you up, pull up on you, just thread you. I mean, he was, and now kind of knowing what you know, looking back and like the basketball that I've watched, referee call been around. It's like man, he's still. Staying like 11, 12 years old, 13 years old, you're still like, damn. Randy Livingston was, I want to say like Livingston at Newman played either against or the same day Kerry Kittles' St. Aug team showed up and they were loaded. Kerry Kittles went on to play for Villanova and went on to play for the New Jersey Nets for like a decade in the league. I mean, he was, he was a player. So, I mean, Louisiana for as football centric and even baseball to a degree. I think that, you know, I mean, a lot of people would even recognize Louisiana just because of LSU winning six national, seven national, is it seven now? Seven? 
seven national championships. Yeah. It, like, I mean, like they also they obviously know baseball down there. Uh, but, I mean, you know, you it's recognized as a football state, but then you kind of lo- start learning of the people that co- have come out mm-hmm. that you're like, wait a minute. He's from Louisiana. Robert Parrish is from Louisiana? <laughs> I remember when I learned that, I was like, say what? Bill Russell. Bill Russell. The Bill guy Russell. that uh, – Bill Russell um, – I don't mean to disrespect. It, Walt, who's Walt Frazier, the guy that limps out for the Knicks in Game Seven and hits the shots? Yeah. He's from Louisiana. You know, like you're. I was like, wait, what? Nick Clyde Drexler's from Louisiana too. Yeah. Or he's he has family here for sure. OJ. <laughs> like, I mean, he's like, the wildest. I told you the first time I met Marcus Allen. He's like, yeah, I got people in Louisiana. I'm like, say what? Yeah. It is. It's it's crazy how many. Ties come back to Louisiana. But for me, Randy Livingston, without question, was the best high school player my eyes have ever seen. Like, just like, holy cow. Tasman was up there. Tasman Mitchell was, I mean, Tasman was the number one recruit in the country as like a sophomore and a junior. Now, his senior season, like, he never, he was as big as he is now as a freshman in high school. Mm. Sophomore so never really in high like school. Grew. Right. But what people don't underestimate, Willis Reed, I'm sorry. Thank you, Cordell. Um, but what people underestimate and don't maybe give Tasman enough credit for is that Tasman was a true freshman that stepped into a Final Four team as a day one starter and never came off the floor. If you look at the player on that Final Four team that played from start to finish and most consistent, like, I mean, Daryl Mitchell is the the leader without question of that team, right? Would hit the big shots, was the the, the guy that, that facilitated, right? But even he throughout the season kind of went through a little bit of a roller coaster. I mean, you know, not, not a, a, a big drop, but, I mean, he, he definitely – was kind of a little up and down from the midpoint to, to the end of it. Tasman from wire to wire as a true freshman with you know guys like Garrett, Glenn Davis, Ta- uh, uh, Daryl Mitchell, um, you know, guys that were around him that had tremendous experience. Darnell Lazar, I mean, stepped in and really from like day one never missed a beat, like was – consistent would defend would hit big shots was never out of position was i mean that's one thing that's why tasman's a good coach now today i mean really i mean you can he had that very young i mean he was just very heady he he was so he was he was so smart and so good i mean it wasn't like he was just a smart player i mean he would beat you physically but he would outsmart you a lot of times um all right, good conversation. Uh, remember Daily, we're brought to you by our friends over at Katie's Restaurant. Katie's in New Orleans. Katie's in MidCity.com. Stop in and see them today. Cold beer, great service. Uh, great place to watch the tournament that cranks up on Thursday. Uh, so if you want a place to check out, go check out Katie's in MidCity.com. They're online there. Uh, but they're also located on Iberville Street. they got a sister restaurant called Francesca's that you can find over uh, in Lakeview. Uh, remember, that uh, Katie's in Mid City. They're open on Sundays as well. Um, Katie's in Mid City.com. Katie's in Mid City.com. We'll talk to Wilson Alexander here in a couple of minutes. We'll get the latest from Wilson here. Tiger's back on the practice field this morning with some of the storylines that, that he's hoping to get out uh, from Coach Kelly today. Uh, as, uh, as we said, he won't be able to, uh, to view any portion of the practice, too. What's going on with this, 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 this schedule? I, I, I feel like everybody just does like. Everybody's just confused on the schedule they haven't looked, but I think the next availability, looking at the schedule, is Thursday. Okay. Because Jacques it, texted me this morning, last night and said that he needs to bump to Thursday because of football practice on Wednesday morning. I mean, and I'm, I'm you know, the, like I'm, me not knowing anything. I'm looking I'm at like, the schedule. Sounds good, bro. Sweet. Thursday, March 21st, which would be this Thursday. Uh, is that the is that the original email? Yes. That okay. Is. Bonnet might have put out an edit. Uh, no one. Bonnet might. Let, uh, let, let me help you out here. Did I forward you that one? You forwarded okay, me this one. Yes, bad, bad. Please yeah, forward. I might have might have left you out of the dry here. Hey. Hey. Let's see here. 
Yeah. Practice schedule and media opportunities revised. Oh. March 18th through 23rd. Tuesday practice, no access. Okay. Wednesday practice, 7.55 a.m. Media camera, photo opportunities, first 20 minutes, player interviews uh, to follow at 9.40. Okay, so we so uh, Then Friday the practice, day. no access. Uh, Saturday morning practice, media in, first 20 minutes. And then open to media for the remainder of practice, just no camera, video, and photo. Should be a... Um, that might be a scrimmage day. Or after 10.15. Not really a scrimmage day, right. but you'll get some live, a little bit of live action from it. So there is practice tomorrow. Okay. Um, and there is practice today. Joe Dumars is from Louisiana. All-time great Piston. Was in the backcourt with Isaiah Thomas on those back-to-back -back championship teams for Detroit. Now, I believe, has his name in the rafters. And don't quote me, but I believe general manager of the Pistons. Maybe even like president of ops. You said Joe Dumars, right? Joe Dumars. Maybe McNeese's most famous alum. Joe Dumars is the executive vice president of the NBA. <laughs> and the head of basketball operations. Good good work if you can find it. Yeah. I mean. Like, I, I think so, huh? But Dumars was, <laughs> uh, in those early Detroit-Chicago games, he was defending Jordan. Mm -hmm. Like, he was the one-on-one -on, -one on Jordan. <laughs> the Jordan rule. <laughs> But he like his, the rule for him was to run Jordan into the paint, mm -hmm. into Lambeer and Mahorn, and, let him and they him. just knocked the hell out of Jordan. <laughs> like just... get him off the ground. <laughs> Joe Dumars just don't leave him. Like but you got to funnel him yeah. into these thugs. I mean in the last like, dance, Jordan into was like Lambeer, who's waiting to throw <laughs> a elbow into Jordan, like, like and not care. Like... <laughs> yeah, like. I mean, like, going to throw a broadsided elbow into Jordan's head. It's like WWE. And then Mahorn's going to step on him when he gets up. That's why Jordan hit the weight room. Jordan rules. Like. Fox. Who? De'Aaron Fox. Wow. Wow. Damn. That's like a top five dog. I mean, we were talking about it yesterday. De'Aaron Fox. We were talking about it yesterday. Omar Khan. Tulane grad. Yeah, Omar Khan. Pittsburgh Steelers GM. Wow, Joe Dumars. Executive Vice President of the NBA. Got Wilson, too. All right, sweet. Uh, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate every week here. We talk to him, covers LSU. Uh, Wilson, new practice schedule put out earlier this week. Tigers on the field today and tomorrow. Uh, open access Saturday. Uh, it's been very limited on what you've seen up to this point. Have you been able to take anything substantial away from what you've seen? Nope, not yeah. really, uh, because we've only had, you know, 20 minutes of open practice. And LSU to this point has only practiced three times, I believe. Uh, today is, you know, they, Brian Kelly does this sort of uh, soft launch almost to spring practice every year because he always starts it right before spring break. So they practice a little bit, then they go on spring break for a week, and then uh, they get back into it. And so spring practice will actually really start to ramp up here kind of this week. And then, uh, you know, from now until the spring game in April 13th. So the next three weeks will be actually, I think, pretty more revealing with spring practice. Uh, we'll actually start to learn more about the team, get more access, you know, have press conferences with Joe Sloan, Blake Baker, uh, talk to players tomorrow and, and such things like that. And then have actually a fully open practice, um, I think, every Saturday other than uh, the Saturday before Easter uh, between now and the spring game. So. You know, but he, he does that, I think he explained last year, it's almost like a loophole in some NCAA rules in order to kind of get more time with the team. And, uh, but it also create means that the first, that spring practice is always a little bit slow to ramp up, but then it really picks up speed uh, here through the end. Uh, Wilson, I know that we've talked about this so many times and we've beat a dead horse on this, but uh, Brad Davis does it again. Tyler Miller, uh, the number one interior offensive lineman in the country. Uh, the number one offensive lineman in the state of Mississippi pledged his commitment to the Tigers last weekend. Uh, throw another one into his room. Uh, what else can you say about what Davis has done? It feels like we talk about him every single yes, week. I mean, and for good reason, because he is recruiting extremely well, and he's cultivating an offensive line that should be a strength uh, for years to come now. I mean, you look at, obviously, the front, you know, sort of those four returning starters, gives you a lot of confidence, but DJ Chester sliding into the mix seems like that 
uh, could be anyways, maybe seamless. All these are freshmen that have, uh, you know, have come in now. You know, they, you know, of course, next year when they, they lose, probably most likely, you know, Will Campbell and Emory Jones and Miles Frazier and Garrett Dellinger, like they'll have to be work to do. But at this point, you know, he's built up that room to where, you know, those guys can come in here and, uh, you know, develop and, and kind of wait and then be ready when they go in instead of throwing Will Campbell and Emory Jones right onto the field as true freshmen, even though they acquitted themselves quite well. You know, you, it seems like LSU might not have to do that really uh, moving forward. And, and Tom Miller's another piece of that. I mean, they've already been recruiting well in this 2025 offensive line. And they've added, you look at the numbers, it's like they've added four or five, even like I think in this last class, sorry, six um, mm-hmm. offensive linemen every year. I mean, they, they are adding, it's not like it's, uh, there hasn't really been like a year that looks really sparse in terms of recruiting the offensive line over the last two years. And, um, you know, Brad Davis has certainly uh, earned the praise that he has gotten to this point. Um, he's done a great job and he continues to do so on the recruiting trail um, with Tyler Miller being the latest example. Uh, yeah, the depth that he has been able to build in such the short time. I mean, it feels like the offensive line is stable now for at least three to five years. I mean, you lose a guy like Zalance Hurd, and I, I never want to sell it like LSU's a, you know, a better team without him. But, I mean, the, the fact that they can absorb this like they have just is really the testament to him. Um, all right, so defensively is the, is the story here, Wilson. What, what do you get out of spring with, with a defense that has to replace so much? I mean, is it just about like technique and, and, and alignment here? Or is it, I mean, it's day one stuff, right? It is. It's the fundamental stuff. It's tackling and pursuit angles and uh, run pits and getting uh, those things worked out. You know, obviously LSU will start to install what Blake Baker wants schematically. Um, but really here in the spring, it isn't as so much about those sort of nitty gritty um, X's and O's things as it is just basic football. And that's kind of what this defense needed to revert back to anyway. You know, they needed to be able to get that stuff right before you could really start to lay on the technical things. Um, you know, obviously LSU is, you know, capable of doing that, but like they, they got to get back to, the, to square one uh, a lot of ways with this defense. And there are a few, you know, returning players, certainly when you look at like Harold Perkins and uh, Greg Penn and Major Burns and some of those guys in the secondary. But obviously, when you come off of last year's defense, uh, it doesn't necessarily um, make too much of a difference if you're returning everybody uh, necessarily. And, and obviously, LSU lost players at some key spots, especially defensive tackle. But like you're also bringing back Savion Jones and Paris Shand and uh, Braden Swinson. And so, you know, there is a few number of returning players on this defense, but they've got to kind of learn how to work cohesively again um, and start with those fundamentals. Uh, that's really going to be the it's going to be paramount here this spring so that when they go into preseason camp, they're not as focused on those sorts of things and can start laying down the schematics of the defense, uh, you know, here in year one under Blake Baker. Uh, another name that feels like he's on the doorstep and, and it is his time uh, is Chris Hilton. Uh, what are the expectations for Hilton and, and what are the projections for Hilton going into next season? Well, it's going to be fascinating. I mean, the expectations and projections are sort of like, okay, are you ready to take the next step? Or can you be a big part of this receiver rotation? Because he finally last year was healthy uh, for most of the season. Um, and, you know, that for the first time in his career, you know, didn't really miss a significant portion of games. Um, and with that, he was able to probably be, I guess you would maybe say wide receiver four. Um, but that was he was still really far off from those top three guys in terms of, uh, you know, catches and, and yards and touchdowns. And so, but now because, you know, you got some guys leave, you know, and now Chris is going into, this will be his fourth season on campus. It's our, the production expectation is just, can you take that next step? Can you be a, a bigger part of this receiver rotation? Uh, because LSU, like we know is of course, you know, replacing the top two guys, but it brings in, you know, Xavier Thomas and CJ Daniels and Brian Kelly talked about them, I guess about two weeks ago now as you know, being some people who are really going to be in the mix for playing time and, and, and possibly starting. And so Chris is going to have to be able to show that he deserves that playing time as well. Um, continue to use his speed down the field, but also really just to further develop as a, the full route tree. You know, mm-hmm. not just be sort of like a one-trick pony, because that's what's going to get him onto the field, is by being able to do a lot more than just stretch it vertically. Yeah. And so as long as he can do that, um, he'll be able to continue to you know, carve out a, a role in this offense um, he's certainly got, you know, the tools we've seen the, in the past um, in, in bits and spurts, um, but now he's really got to build it all together and become more of a complete wide receiver in order to be able to get on the field more. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that we ask you about it every week, but these new faces, these early enrollees, uh, who will you be pinpointing when you get a chance to go out there on Wednesday and Saturday of just kind of making sure that you put eyeballs on? 
Yeah, Gabe Relaford yeah. uh, certainly comes to mind. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see kind of what he can do of anything as a freshman. Um, all of a sudden, the, the names are escaping me out here. But uh, Deshaun McBride, yes. uh, Joel Rogers there in the secondary in particular. You know, a lot of the guys who are on defense, can any, you know, because we know what this defense is doing after year one, it's can any of these guys kind of come in and make a difference on defense right away? Um, I don't think it, you know, an inside linebacker, uh, LSU is pretty set there in terms of, you know, Greg Penn and Harold Perkins and the Weeks brothers. So you're probably not looking at uh, too many of those guys as being able to make, you know, day one impacts. Um, but those other ones, that those positions of possibly uh, concern, uh, certainly have more of a chance to get on the field. And so McBride and, and I think Relaford would probably be my top two. And then Cohen Eccles as well on the offensive side and some of those other early and early offensive linemen. Can they be on the two deep? You know, LSU, as great as the, that first team offensive line is, as we know, you got to be able to have some depth ready uh, just in case of the worst scenario happens. And so if any of those guys, especially Eccles, who we saw as the second team center a couple weeks ago, hmm. are ready, those kinds of would be some of the ones to keep an eye on. Uh, good stuff as always, Wilson. Make sure and check him out on social media at WH Alexander. There'll be some busy stuff coming up with LSU on the field today. Access tomorrow, open access Saturday. Uh, so uh, a lot of content for Wilson to be reporting back for us. Uh, thank you, man. You're welcome. We'll have a lot more to go over, I think, next week. Absolutely. Uh, there he is, Wilson Alexander, the best. Make sure and follow him at WH Alexander underscore uh, on social media to keep up with the latest uh, as uh, Wilson is always kind with his time on Tuesday mornings to stop by with us. Uh, Daily, we're brought to you by Hughes Mechanical. Travis Hughes and the crew are Hughes Mechanical contractors online. HughesMechanical.net. Uh, they got uh, offices in Zachary and up on the North Shore. So anybody uh, that uh, is needing service along the I-10 corridor, whether you're residential or commercial, Hughes Mechanical contractors uh, should be an option for you. HughesMechanical.net, 225-658-2147, 225-658-2147. Hughes Mechanical uh, contractors, HughesMechanical.net uh, online. Uh, it will be interesting to see what Brad Davis does with this offensive line as now he's got these guys on campus. He's continuing to recruit at a high level, as we told you, the Tyler Miller um, commitment. But now that he's got some of these guys, uh, including Cohen Eccles on campus, who Eccles seems to be running with the second team already behind um, our guy DJ Chester, who they absolutely love. Chester uh, is starting center, right? Starting center coach got him some reps last season. The importance in the Missouri game, in the Missouri game, the importance of the center position uh, can be underestimated, uh, can never be undervalued uh, from just an important standpoint. I, I think and would call uh, the center position second most important position on the field, third most important I, I'd say position. Second. On the field, I mean, quarterback and center. That's the only two people that touch the ball every play. Touches the ball every play, makes the line calls, has to set the the the, the, the protection. Um, you know, has to understand what the front is in. You know, just kind of like call the just the, the the stuff every single play you're responsible for. Like every single play, you have to call out, get other people on the same page, communicate. I mean. Not only that, you've got to snap the football and then get your head up and protect yourself against maybe a top three athlete on the field. You know, I mean, you're talking about some of these guys that are playing interior with their hand in the dirt. I mean, you know, Aaron Donald just stepped away for 10 years. Could you imagine time to snap the ball and then get your hands up to protect yourself from this guy? <laughs> Have fun. I mean, <laughs> so... Um. Yeah, DJ Chester playing as a true freshman at center, I think, is just glowing. I think it has a lot to do with Charles Turner's decision. Yeah. I mean, I think Turner was looking in his rear view saying, man, this guy's gaining a lot of ground really quick. I'm a three-year starter potentially, and I may be in jeopardy of fighting for my job every week. Let me just go, you know, do this for real. I can't wait to see what the the eight nine deep is, ten deep is on on LSU's offensive line. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like if you remember back in the day, they put out the depth chart on the offensive line. You'd have three guys playing one position. 
think you know what I mean? Like you'd have three, or excuse me, three guys playing three positions. You know, one guy playing three positions is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Dellinger would be center guard and tackle. Oh, he was everywhere. Backup. Or he'd be the starter at one position and the backup, backup left that tackle. Other. Backup right tackle. I mean, like now you've legitimately got tackles, interior offensive linemen, and centers. Guys that you've recruited, trained, and practiced at that spot, and now they've created depth there. I mean, I you know, I, I obviously the Will Campbell and Emory Jones era of LSU football is just going to go down as some of the all-time best and highlights of Brad Davis's career, no matter how long he coaches and no matter how he, he continues to recruit at a high level, he, he probably will not have a pair like Campbell and Jones, you know, for at least another decade that can just step in day one, be SEC guys and be all Americans. Right. Um, but I mean, I, I'm looking forward to seeing Bo, Bo Bordelon. And, and Tyree Adams and and DJ Chester and and Paul Mubanga and, and I mean I know I'm leaving guys out you know I mean just some of these guys that they have brought in that physically when you look them up on on the highlight film or you see them you know coming in you're like geez man I mean this guy is nasty you know I mean even a guy like Joe Cryer who they stole late in the process from Ole Miss you know, I, I believe as the story goes, Brian Kelly told him a year ago, start snapping. Learn how to be a center, son. So, I mean, man, I, I am really looking forward to seeing this offensive line. And, you know, I think that while the, the defense has some, you know, their, their issues are different where, I mean, it's installation, it's technique, it's day one stuff. I mean, you know, it's it's buckle your chin strap and, you know, here here's how you connect your mouthpiece. I mean, it, it is some some elementary type, you know, 101 football stuff that's happening on the defensive side. On the offensive side, I think you're talking about like some four or five thousand level type stuff. I mean, you're you're talking graduate classes now where you've got Emory Jones and Will Campbell going into their third season. This is Campbell's third spring. I mean, he is a veteran. He Dang. knows it all. And he's been the starting left tackle since his first spring. Emory Jones is a, you know, going into his third year as a a three-year starter. I mean, these guys are are salty. I mean, like they're 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 old veterans at this point. I mean, you probably give these guys a, you know, would at least allow them a couple of like days off in spring if they need it. I don't, I don't know if Campbell and Jones would take those days, but, I mean, you know, you guys have earned it. And and just seeing what you got. But, I mean, it's uh, – I, I think – you know, I mean, Garrett Dellinger's back. I mean, Dellinger's a pro. I'm just very interested to see how the defense comes to form. Sure. Like, I mean, you kind of know. Like, I, for me, I like when I go to practice, I don't even watch the offense. Yeah, because right. it's like it's it's a known. No, but it's just fun to you know. Yeah, it's it's fun to to look at like the depth and everything on the offensive side. But like whenever I go to practice, I kind of just like leave the offense to do their thing because I know what's over there. Like I look at the defense and I'm just watching the different drills that they're doing. And like you said, it's freshman level stuff. Like it's learning how to. Properly take a pursuit angle, how to properly break down, how to make a tackle, how to make a rolling tackle, how to it's just like the the simplest of the simplest in football is what the defense is doing and the offense is working on pulling guards, pulling tackles, like the the advanced football level stuff. And it's just I mean, that's just where they are as a team. Right. But that's why I'm so interested in seeing if the if the defense could catch up to the offense and fast. Because once the season starts, it's like if they aren't on the same page, you see what happened last season when the offense and the defense aren't on the same level. Team struggles. So, Back at it today. LSU football, busy week ahead on campus. Um, so if you are looking to get out and catch some live sports, uh, we'll be at the Maryland Center tonight. LSU playing North Texas in some postseason action on campus for NIT. 
the, the ladies play on Friday, right? They play Friday? Yes. Or Friday. Uh, Friday versus Rice uh, is LSU ladies on campus hosting postseason play uh, versus Rice. They will play uh, the winner of Louisville and who's the 12 seed? Is it Rice? No, we play Rice. LSU plays Rice. Um, man, I got it. Uh, they're probably going to play Louisville on Sunday. <laughs> uh, I know that's the analysis that you turned in for. Uh, and that's the breakdown that you tuned in for. For sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is, for God's sake, somebody help me out inside the chat. I got you. I'm looking at it. Bad. Bad. Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee. Right. I told you, Stewie. Yeah. Told you. Uh, you tell me shit. <laughs> uh, all right. Make sure and like, share, comment, subscribe. We're back with you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Have a great day. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification, we about to go live. We got all your favorite guests, we got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show, come have a good time. It's the hottest show around, we ain't got a flex. Call up G, we get it done, we earning our respect. Tell recruits to let us in, where they going next? Throw up the L's, now we lit, band playing neck. From the boot to the east to the west coast. No matter where we at, we live, mic'd up for show. Open up the phone lines, come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show, yeah. Yeah, Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Huh? Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. Huh? We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. Huh? It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Yeah. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, yeah you see the notification. We about to go live. Yeah. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. Yeah. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Yeah. <laughs>